And so I thought I would bring the foremost expert on this topic, Richard Goldberg, former senior official National Security Council under President Trump with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy, senior advisors. Richard, welcome. Uh, so it's here. This is incredibly serious. Uh, the uh, Iranians have been slow walking the Biden administration, which has been on its knees begging them to get back to negotiations in a serious way. Now they're going to have nuclear weapons, weaponized nuclear missiles that at some point soon will be able to reach Europe and then the United States and certainly the Arab countries and certainly Israel. What do you make of this? Mark, uh, good evening. Thanks for having me. You're absolutely right. It's unbelievable to think where we have come over the last year and a half uh, under the Biden administration's failed policies on Iran, going from maximum pressure to maximum deference almost overnight on January 20th, 2021. No more military deterrence. The Iranians are not afraid of the United States right now. No economic sanctions enforcement. We're seeing exports of oil to 900,000 barrels per day, uh, most of that going to China. No crackdown on that. So the Iranians are feeling pretty good economically right now relative to where they were during the maximum pressure campaign. No pressure in Vienna at that UN watchdog, the International Atomic Energy Agency. So the question I think the Iranians have is, why would we do anything to constrain our nuclear activities? Why would we constrain ourselves in the region? Why would we slow down our sponsorship of terrorism or building those longer range missiles that can hit the continental United States? We don't face any consequences right now from the United States of America. And so, yes, we have these alarming reports that throughout the last year and a half of the appeasement campaign to try to offer around billions of dollars to come back to that flawed, terrible Iran nuclear deal, that's expiring anyways. What we have seen is the Iranians march forward with their nuclear program, advance their enrichment, increase their stockpile, heighten the level of purity of enriched uranium we just talked about, 60%. They are really just a stone's throw away from that weapons grade uranium and being able to build weapons if they chose to do so. But more strikingly, and I think very important this week, we're gonna be seeing some meetings in Vienna at the International Atomic Energy Agency. We've seen some breaking news reports that the director general of that agency, the UN's foremost nuclear watchdog, has now come clean to the board and said, we have been investigating Iran for over three years now, not with what you see on TV, not with what you just read from what we know about what Iran's doing, but the secret parts of Iran's nuclear program that we don't know about. The IAEA has now found four sites that they have never ever been uh, told about before by the Iranians. Three of those sites tested positive for nuclear material we have no idea what was there, where it is today, where the equipment associated with that material is today. All of this thanks to that nuclear archive that Israel stole out of Iran back in 2018. What does this tell us, Mark? It tells us that the Iranians have been cheating from the very beginning of that nuclear deal. And that the idea of having any nuclear deal with a nuclear threshold state that lies to inspectors, that cheats its way out of any agreement, that is concealing undeclared nuclear activities and material, it's completely ludicrous. You can't have any deal with Iran until you have a full accounting of all past and present activities. Now, what are we gonna see this week? We're not sure. Up until now, the Biden administration has gone along with its special envoy for Iran, Rob Malley, who's sort of the appeaser in chief right now for the Iranians. Uh, do nothing to provoke the Iranians. What we think may happen finally is a resolution picking up where the Trump administration left off that could lead to the reimposition of international sanctions on Iran, new political pressure. But it's gonna take more than just a resolution in Vienna to stop Iran from breaking out into a nuclear weapon state. We're gonna to have to have a restoration of military deterrence. We're gonna to have to have reimposition of tough economic sanctions. We're gonna to have to isolate this regime. And in the end, we have to have a bottom line as a country. We are not going to allow the world leading state sponsor of terrorism to become a nuclear power. Do you think we like that Russia is able to bully around the neighborhood in Europe right now because of their nuclear weapons program? Do you see the self-restraint, the self-deterrence from this White House in trying to help our Ukrainian allies in the face of Russia because of their nuclear stockpile? Imagine what happens to the Middle East. Imagine what happens to the world if Iran goes nuclear too.